Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose Galarza. I'm the training coordinator with the Redistricting Data Hub. And today I have the distinct honor of presenting to you folks on preparing to analyze a map for COIs. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All righty. So today we're going to go over a couple of things. Uh, go ahead and present here. So first we're gonna talk about uh, which states consider COIs, uh, where to find COIs, where to find enacted plans, uh, understanding census geographies and file types, and then finally uh, exploring the exportable formats. Great, so first we're gonna talk about um, which states consider COI. So I'm gonna show a couple of uh, maps here with different highlights for different states. Um, and what you're seeing right now are states that do consider COIs. Um, so you have states all the way from Maine to California um, and all in between. Um, these states do consider COIs um, either through their constitution or through whatever independent body or body that is currently um, involved with redistricting. Um, so some examples that I'll probably mention in another slide include uh, Michigan and Arizona. Um, in their constitutions, it states, it states communities of interest very explicitly, although in sort of different capacities. Michigan is one example where it talks about communities of interest very in depth and has a lot of uh, details on it. Um, whereas Arizona is very concise, sort of having it in one sentence. The old notes here, all the way um, different states listed. The only two um, exceptions are Arkansas and Oklahoma. Uh, Arkansas sort of is more on the legislative bodies of it, and Oklahoma is on the House of Representatives side of it, whereas the other sort of uh, chamber is a little bit uh, still in the maybe or in the area, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, now we have states that do not consider uh, COIs. So um, these states include uh, Connecticut, Iowa, Nevada, North Dakota, Ohio, Tennessee, and Texas. Um, so these could be um, because that they just have not considered in the past. It's just very explicitly stated that they, will, they won't consider it. Um, there's also potential that they, they don't really include it in the redistricting process. So um, those are things considered, um, but just look out for these states since these will, will be ones that do not consider COIs. Now we're in more of the maybe area. So I'll try to talk a little bit more about the maybes. Um, so for example, um, we have Alaska, Hawaii, Mississippi, Oklahoma, and Wisconsin. So for example, Alaska, um, it states in their constitution that each house district shall be formed um, of contiguous and compact territory uh, containing as nearly as practicable a relatively integrated socioeconomic area. So highlighting the relatively socioeconomic area um, can relate to communities of interest but it's not explicitly stated in sort of my prior examples of Michigan and Arizona. Um, so that's sort of more in the maybe we haven't really gotten a good confirmation on it yet. Um, another example is um, Mississippi. So um, they follow criteria sort of based on a court case, um, which references community of interest twice, uh, but never expl explicitly states that there, that it was a goal. Um, so again, you know, either through court cases, either through sort of the redistricting body or the constitution itself, we have to sort of uh, give it our best guess that right now these, these folks are potential maybe sort of on the evidence we have um, on these states, but sort of in these considerations. Now we get some more of the unknown territory. So these states are relatively a little more ambiguous on whether or not uh, they will consider a community of interest uh, these could be, again, um, based on the fact that they're still currently in the redistricting process. So, for example, like Florida could still be in the redistricting process. 
Um, but for like examples here, like Connecticut, uh, Delaware, and Florida, um, they did not have additional criteria in 2011. Um, so they're unlikely to have it uh, this round, but it's not definitely confirmed. So again, it's sort of more of a grain of salt here where um, we don't want to say a yes or no on this. So it could be more of just like trying to figure it out as the redistricting process gets along with as more states start implementing. And then lastly, um, we just have a few uh, just quick examples here where it's again like one chamber, it's like a yes, but then like the other side, it's like a no or a maybe. Uh, so for example, uh, Oklahoma, it's a yes, I believe for the House of Representatives, but it's, um, Sorry, yes, it's a it's yes, but then there's also like a maybe for the other side. Um, it's again not exactly clear um, as to and it's stated in the Constitution whether or not it fully considers COIs and sort of all of its sort of levels uh, of levels of trying to redistrict. Um, similar with Connecticut is another example where it's a no for the legislative but it's an unknown for the congressional. So the congressional process could still be ongoing for Connecticut, um, but we know it's a definite no for the legislative. So again, just keep those things in mind too for these states um, on, you know, they'll consider one aspect of it, either a yes, maybe or no, one of them, or it's still sort of like an unknown in the other on it. Most states are pretty sort of, um, Pretty much a yes or a no in sort of definite in what they're doing with COIs. So um, just I was like saying before earlier in the, the first slide, um, this sort of is an example of Michigan's constitution when it talks about COIs. Um, I won't go over the, the entire statement, but you can definitely see here that community of interest is actually included uh, multiple times, um, at least three times that I'm seeing here in just this one paragraph. Um, so it does a great detail of trying to talk about COIs in its constitution um, and is very specific with what it's trying to state. And then you have constitutions like Arizona, where it's a lot more concise, like it still states very explicitly communities of interest, but it doesn't give more detail onto that. So there's a little bit more ambiguity there. However, again, it is in their constitutions to respect communities of interest. Um, so we can definitely say that they're both a yes. Again, there is still some sort of um, range to how, how, how much information that's being given in each of these locations. Awesome. So I want to talk about a couple of things here, um, more of where to find COIs. So the first thing I actually want to talk about is the mapping tool called Representable. So representable is an application where you are actually able to create your own COIs. So it specifically creates COIs. Um, what I'm going to show you today is when you get on the representable website, you can go here where it says view and export maps. And if you click on it, it gives you an option to click on any state. So for example, we'll do Florida. And you'll notice as it starts loading, you'll notice these sort of like little bit shaded areas in Florida um, that contain people that have made COIs. So if you notice, there's these kind of not super shaded, but as we sort of hover through, um, you'll notice that we are able to see some of the COIs. So We'll just click on just like one here as an example of a COI that was created. And you could sort of give a show more for more information. If you click on the COI itself, um, it'll give you more information of the COI. So you can actually download it as a GeoJSON. You can download it as a CSV uh, block assignment file. Um, again, we'll just give this a second to load. So 
Um, just an example here, as you see sort of the, the escape. Again, this was this public. Um, somebody made this and was able to share it publicly. Um, that's a great thing with representables. You're able to create the CLI and you can share it publicly. Um, this one doesn't have as much information on here about the community, but it does a great job in sort of listing um, things on the community as well. Um, something great here is data layers, just another feature that Representable, I believe, recently put. So you're able to actually click on different um, data layers. For example, if we click State Senate Districts, you'll notice that there's sort of like a highlight now. And if we scroll out, um, we'll notice that um, we're in the Florida State Senate District 28. So um, just by that, what we have right now, the COI rests in a state Senate district. It doesn't cross into any other district. Um, if we do something more about school districts, um, again, this example, um, it doesn't cross into a, any state or school districts. So um, I believe this is really great just to check on these kind of options that it gives. Um, so definitely check that out. And there's also information on election data and demographics. So another tool um, that I'm going to talk about is the RDH public access page. Um, so I'm going to open that page right now to show you folks. So um, here is the public access state redistricting processes page. Um, you can go to this page by first going to the home page. You can either go to the home page or just access the link on the presentation. But what you do is when you get to the home page, click on projects, and then you're going to see um, some options here. Um, I'm actually going to talk about the community of interest map um, in a second, um, but we actually want to go to the public access to state redistricting processes page. So what you'll see here is that there's going to be um, links to every state. So for example, Alabama, um, you'll notice there is a section for meetings, status, and groups. So you'll see scheduled meetings, uh, meeting archives, who drew these lines, uh, when the lines are drawn, and organizations involved in redistricting. You have other states of Alaska where it gives you options to submit maps and draw maps, as well as upcoming meetings and submitting testimonies. Um, so definitely check this page out if you're in a specific state, because um, it will give great information on sort of um, what you're trying to do and what you're trying to look for. The other page I wanted to highlight was the Community of Interest Map Collection Project. So this is an ongoing project right now um, that's being run by our data collection coordinators. Um, so definitely take a look at this page. If you have any more questions on this, I recommend reaching out to um, John, who's our data collection coordinator at Ponsible at redistrictingdatahub.org. Um, so definitely reach out to him if you have any more questions about this, but definitely check the page out on sort of information being described here. And just as I was saying before, um, mentioning the Michigan Arizona examples are listed on the site as well. So there's some, just some examples of where to find COIs. Now I want to talk about where to find enacted or proposed plans. Um, so definitely redistricting data hub is one option where you can find an accurate proposed plans, but just I want to highlight uh, redistrict 2020 um, all about redistricting DRA 2020 and plan score. So I'm actually going to um, highlight redistrict uh, 2020 for a second because it does a great job in actually um, showing all of these other sites. Um, and if you would like more information on the group that is running this, um, feel free to scroll down to the bottom of the page. You're going to see here where it says contribute to redistrict 2020 on GitHub, and then you're going to be able to see the folks that are contributing uh, to this project. So if you're curious on folks who are working on it, um, you can check that out right here. But we're going to go back to the redistrict 2020 page. Um, we're just going to do an example here of Florida. So we'll do Florida State House. And what's really nice is you're able to see um, a bunch of different links here. Uh, so for example, if you're looking for the, the Florida State House map, um, here you'll have the Dave's redistricting app view of it. You'll have district builder view of it. You'll have plan scores predictive model of it and all about redistrict linked to it. And you will have access to the block assignment file. So if you wanted to upload this to one of the mapping tools you're working on, then it has a zip file where it contains the block assignment file itself. Um, so redistrict 2020 uh, does a great job in this, but as well, um, DRA 
um, has uh, a page where it contains all of the current maps either being proposed or enacted. Um, as well, you can check plans code for all of the uh, proposed and enacted plans as well. And of course, redistricting data hub does great job in including the proposed and enacted maps for you to um, check out as well and download. Great, so I wanna start talking about um, understanding the census geography. So um, why I wanna talk about census geographies and how that relates to your COIs is somewhat because of if you're working on uh, one or more of the free mapping tools available, um, they most likely will be automatically working in block group formats. Um, however, you can work in block formats um, as well, but I'm going to sort of go also go into information about what each of these things mean and how they sort of correspond to each other. Um, but first, I want to show this really great graphic um, that I got from ArcGIS. I have the link um, to this page in the presentation as well. Um, but here you just see the entire United States, and then you have the state of California. Oops, I'll go back. State of California here. Um, then you sort of go down further, and then you have a county in California. Go down further, you have a tract in the county. Go down one step further, you have two block groups in this tract. Take it one step further, then you got the block in the block group. And then finally, you have the block centroid in the block. So obviously, the main points are really the block groups and the blocks themselves, because usually those are what you will be working with, either when you're trying to um, either trying to build out your COI or you're trying to analyze um, any of the COIs with the proposed maps um, that are coming out. So let me first talk about the blocks. So um, as you were saying, like the blocks or statistical areas, they're bounded by both uh, visible features and non-visible features. So the visibles are like streets, roads, streams, and railroad tracks. The more non-visible boundaries can include property lines, city, town, school districts, city limits, or just more short line of sight things like streets and roads. Um, generally, these census blocks are small in area. So an example is if you're, you're in a city, um, usually a census block could just be uh, a block uh, that's a block in a city that's bounded all sides by streets. Uh, so that could be one example. Some other examples could be a lot larger. Um, so they could be more larger in suburban or rural areas, or even in really remote areas. Um, they'll probably even cover hundreds of square miles, uh, depending on the state. Uh, census blocks do cover the entire territory of the United States, and census blocks nest within all other tabulated census geographic entities, and they're the basis for all tabulated data. Great. Next, I want to talk about block groups, which is the next step up from the blocks, um, which basically the block groups are made up of blocks. Um, they're defined to contain between 600 and 3,000 people. Um, so they are not sort of the, the same in terms of population for each block group. So you will notice when you either build out a community of interest or, or just any other kind of map, you'll notice that block groups are not indeed the same by population. So you'll, you'll see those as you work on them. Um, blocks in the block group contain the same for digits, first digits of their four digit census block number. So for example, the, you have blocks from 3001, 3002, 3003, all the way to 3999. Um, they cover a contiguous area um, and uh, each census tract contain at least one block group. And lastly, block groups never cross the state, county or census tract boundaries, but may cross boundaries of any other geographic entity. Let me see here. Okay, great. So with that all being said, I wanted to actually show this example um, that's from the CUNY uh, Graduate Center. Um, so I actually have a link to their page on communities of interest in the presentation that you can check out. Um, it's really, really great. Um, this is just one of, I believe, seven different maps that they have that break down on sort of different, um, different types of things. Um, but here we have um, on predominant race and ethnicity by tract. Um, so something that I just wanted to highlight here um, when you're sort of considering things like COIs and the proposed maps 
or sort of how the geographies are. So you have New York City. If you notice in this area, it's a little bit small, but if you notice this kind of white block sort of has some bumps on it, you'll notice that this is the uh, Central Park area. Um, and then here you'll notice on the other bumps that these are most likely parks. They could just be open space or they could be cemeteries. So those are things to consider um, as well. Just wanted to highlight this little circle here between the Bronx and Queens. Um, this is Rikers Island. Um, so this is, I believe, the biggest prison in New York City. Um, and that's just for consideration of when you're looking um, at COIs. Um, are there any other kind of um, areas to look at when you are sort of creating on analyzing um, you know, looking for adjusted populations, folks that are incarcerated that may or may not be counted in the process. Um, so just wanted to point those things out. Again, check out their page. I think they do a really great job in sort of um, breaking down different types of things. Again, this one is predominantly on race and ethnicity, but they have other sort of uh, breakdowns as well. Great, so another thing I wanna talk about is VTDs and precincts. So VTDs are voting tabulation districts. Um, their census geographies, precincts are county level or equivalent geographies. Uh, VTDs are based on the precinct boundaries that the states and counties submit to the Census Bureau. And states make changes to precincts after submitting them to the Census Bureau. The only states are, uh, that do not do this are California, Oregon, and Hawaii. They do not submit precincts at all. So just showing another sort of example here, um, these are just some voting uh, district states um, for Colorado. Um, so you could just sort of see all the breakdowns. Again, sort of I was noting with like blocks or block groups, um, they're all of different sizes. And again, for different reasons, if you notice here, sort of like a collection, very like big lump. If we scroll down further, you'll notice there's a lot of blocks there. So we can make a guess that this is a metropolitan area versus if you go and expand out, you notice the really larger blocks will probably be very remote areas. So you'll very easy to spot and sort of see um, how that gets broken down. Um, again, I have this link in the presentation if you want to check it out. And just another note as well, um, geographies uh, have changed from 2010 to 2020. That's sort of the reason they sort of submit these to um, the census. Um, and all mapping tools are on 2020 geographies. So you do not have to worry if you are maybe incorrectly making a 2010 geography map or COI. Um, you do not have to worry about that at all. You can just do a 2020, uh, you'll just know that it's on 2020 geographies, which will be great. Um, quick example here is Sarasota County. Um, another page that I recommend checking out, um, have again, also linked in this presentation, um, but you'll be able to actually scroll and sort of slide this kind of counter to see the difference from 2010, which is on the left, to 2020. Um, so it does a really great job in showing you the differences um, in the, the county divisions. So definitely, again, check that out. But just rest assured, all mapping tools are on 2020, uh, so you can freely work on those with no problem. Great, so now I want to go over um, some of the file types. So first I wanna talk about JSON and GeoJSON. So GeoJSON is the format for coding geographic data structures, loading things like lines, points, polygons, and non-spatial attributes. These include descriptions, fields, and notes. Um, this format sits inside a bigger language classification called JSON or JavaScript object notation. And that is a text only format derived from the structure of JavaScript. And then an important note here is that when you encounter GeoJSON files, they will either have the extension of GeoJSON or JSON. The additional note to this is that most of the time you will probably come across GeoJSON files if you're working with the mapping tools. So usually the mapping tools may ask you to upload a GeoJSON or you'll have the option to download it as a GeoJSON file. Um, so most of the time you'll probably come across more of the GeoJSON uh, file itself um, when you're trying to work with COIs um, and trying to have those either uploaded into one of the mapping tools. Next, we have uh, assignment file CSV. So um, as I was mentioning a little bit earlier in the presentation, you saw 
for the example of the Florida House actually is a block assignment file. Um, so they're among the geographic uh, products that the Census Bureau provides to states and other data users. Um, they're containing small area census data necessary for legislative uh, redistricting. So um, they definitely do a good job and you're actually able to upload some of these block assignment files. Um, for example, you can uh, go to District Builder and you can upload that uh, assignment file from the Florida House um, and put that there and you're able to sort of read and see the entire thing in its totality. Um, these files can also contain GOIDs. Um, there's also pre-sent pre assignment files. Um, so they're basically just spreadsheets that contain a lot of different pieces of information, um, but you are able to upload these files and usually they will come across in the plans when you look at Redistrict 2020 and other, and other sites. Next, we have shape files. So there are a set of files that contain geospatial information. Um, these can include shapes, attributes, and location of geographic features. Um, they often contain in a zip file. Um, and the, the files that must be included in the zip file are shape, SHX, DBF, and PRJ. Um, and just wanted to also put an additional note here um, is usually you'll be uploading uh, any kind of shape files to a mapping tool potentially at inside the zip file, because just as this uh, point was seen here, the zip file will not just contain a shape file, probably contain some other files with it as well that complement the shape file. So just keep this, keep it inside the zip file and upload it as a zip file if you are working with these shape files. Um, there are several variations of shape files, however, and it is uncommon for the zip file folder to contain another file type. So usually, usually shape files, you can pretty much sort of work within different mapping tools. Um, for example, if you're trying to upload onto QGIS, um, you can upload the shape file and you actually are able to put that shape file. For example, if you're doing a state, it'll sort of correctly put it in the correct place in the United States. Um, and you're able to, again, sort of incorporate those other files that are in there. Then lastly, I want to talk about the exportable formats for the different mapping tools. Um, so as you see here, we have representable district builder, district builder and DRA. Um, so for representable, you're able to download as a CSV and GeoJSON as we saw earlier in the presentation. However, you cannot download it as a JSON shape file or um, it does not have a tool specific file. District on the other hand, you can download as a CSV, GeoJSON and a shape file. And it does have a tool specific file for Districtor. You're not able to download as a JSON. District Builder, similarly, you can use CSV, GeoJSON, and shape files, um, but you cannot do it as JSON, nor does it have a tool specific file. And then lastly, DRA, you're actually able to do all of that is listed and it has its own tool specific file as well. So that is all I have for you folks today. Thank you so much for coming to preparing to analyze a map for COIs. Again, um, I will provide a, um, a link to the presentation with all the links provided. So again, um, if I mention any, any slides uh, here that I said to go sort of check them out for more information, um, those links are in these slides. So do not worry about trying to look for them. They are provided on here. Um, and again, thank you all so much for coming and hope you have a happy holidays. Thank you very much.